Hey guys, Brad Loomis with 3D Muscle Journey, and I got a good question on our YouTube channel that not only I thought I would address here, but then also prompted some ideas in my mind that might help explain strength loss and if it's a real thing when cutting um, and, and dropping weight. So the question is, um, is it possible for to you? For you to do a video on losing size while cutting and how to deal with it mentally. Well, first of all, when you're cutting, at least if you're doing it the best and smartest way, you're going to get smaller. You're going to lose size because you're, you're dropping fat, or at least that's the goal. So without all that fat, you're going to look smaller. You're not going to look as big. Um, usually there's good things that go along with that. When you drop fat, your muscles show more, you look more cut, you look more muscular, and the fruits of your labor are usually revealed. So that's kind of a good way to look at it um, and to deal with it mentally. So basically it's just kind of a reality of life. You, you're dropping fat you're going to be smaller. So then it's just up to the, the athlete to decide, do they, which world do they want to live in? Do they want to live in the world of being bigger and less cut and not seeing you know, as much of their musculature? Or do you want to be the athlete that is smaller and looks more cut and more of their you know, musculature is visible? It's simply up to the athlete and where, you know, they want to live. So when I got this question, it, it prompted the, you know, question in my mind or the idea in my mind is not so much size, but is strength loss when cutting a real thing? And so I wanted to touch on that and kind of look at it a different way or I guess put a little bit different spin on it. And then hopefully this will help athletes that are cutting um, deal with strength loss in a more positive way and maybe that it's not quite so real. So first thing I wanted to touch on was payload or what um, a lot of uh, powerlifting federations, um, the way they figure out their overall winner. And basically I always equate it to the payload. If you take the same bodybuilder um, weighing at one point at 181 pounds and then at another point at 165 pounds and then compare the different lifts. If you take this bodybuilder who weighs 181 pounds and say his best squat at 181 pounds is 400 pounds, then you see that he cuts down to 165 pounds and his squat drops from 400 to 390. Well, some bodybuilders might look at that, bodybuilders and powers might look at that and say, oh, well, I've, I've lost muscle because my, I'm not as strong. I can't squat as much. Well, let's look at that in terms of payload, in comparing weight lifted to body weight. If we take our bodybuilder when he weighed 181 pounds and his squat we take 400, divide it by his 181 pounds, he lifted basically 2.2, just over 2.2 um, times his body weight. So his payload is basically 2.2, or 2.2 times his body weight, okay? Now, let's take that same bodybuilder um, who cuts down to 165 pounds, but only loses 10 pounds on his squat. 390 pound squat, divide that by his body weight of 165 pounds. Now he's lifting 2.36 times his body weight. So even though, yes, his squat did go down, his payload actually went up. So it's arguable that his um, strength has increased. So if we take those same factors, let's run it across his bench press, his deadlift, and then also his total, um, the numbers start to get pretty dramatic. So again, we'll take this 181 pound bodybuilder and we'll take his bench press, his best bench press of 300 pounds, 
divide that by his body weight of 181 pounds, his payload is 1.6, basically 1.66 if we round it. He cuts down to 165 pounds and he loses 20 pounds on his bench press. So 280, divide that by 165, and we get 1.69, or basically if you round it, we get 1.70 is his payload. He's benching 1.7 times his body weight. Now we'll take his deadlift. 480 pounds, divide that by that 181 pound bodybuilder. He's lifted 2.65 times his body weight, or his payload is basically 2.65. Same, same bodybuilder cuts down to 165 pounds. His deadlift drops to 465. Take that, divide it by his body weight. That made a pretty good size jump. That went to 2.81 times his body weight. So now let's take that and we'll figure out his total. Um, 181 pound power lifter slash bodybuilder with a total of 1140. Divide that by his body weight of 181 pounds. That's 6.29, basically 6.3 times his body weight. So he cuts down to 165 pounds. He loses a little bit on his total. But now his, his payload is 6.8 or 6.81, I guess, if you want, or 6.82, if you want to get nitpicky about it. So arguably, even though, sure, this power lifter slash bodybuilder can't quite lift the same amount of weight that he, he um, could when he was heavier, he's arguably stronger as long as he dieted, um, he dieted smart, didn't diet too fast, and was able to maintain at least 90% of his strength. He's arguably a stronger person now. And therefore, obviously, you've retained or maintained uh, a lot of your muscle, possibly even gained some. That's still very arguable. Um, now, when considering you know, strength loss uh, during the cut, the other thing that has to be taken into consideration is the change in leverages that happen. Remember that body fat is distributed you know, all over the body. And not only uh, is it subcutaneous, but you also got to remember there's body fat in the muscle. If you picture a, a piece of steak um, that's got a lot of marbling in it, that's fat that's inside of the muscle. And our bodies are no different. We've got that marbling in our muscles. And when we drop body fat, that fat goes as well. So I've drawn this crude picture to kind of explain leverages in a way. We'll take our, our 181 pound bodybuilder and all this mass back here kind of represents body fat. And then he's also got the marbling in his glutes and in his hips and then down here in his hamstrings, also body fat. Now it doesn't weigh much, but that's still weight. And if you think about leverages, that's all weight in his butt that's pulling down. So if this is his hip joint right here, the fulcrum, that's going to help him be able to pull up more weight. So you take that same 165 pound power lifter who's dropped arguably 15, 16 pounds, a lot of that fat is going to be gone. Now there's not as much weight back there pulling down around that fulcrum. Not as much weight can come up. So basically, if you can maintain your deadlift using this rationalization, you've done really well because you don't have as much weight back here pulling you down. Now that may or may not be correct, but leverages are definitely a, a real thing um, you know, in strength training. And so hopefully that will also put a lot of bodybuilders' minds at rest when they do lose a little bit of strength while cutting. Remember, the reason we weight train when cutting is to maintain muscle. Basically let our muscles know, yes, we do need you, and no, you can't go away while I'm cutting. So any strength training is going to help maintain muscle. 
you do it smart, have organized training, and see things like this happen, you've done a good job. So hopefully this helps you guys. Hopefully this puts a lot of minds at rest as bodybuilders are cutting for the bodybuilding stage. And just keep at it. So until next time, I get a good question or what have you. This is Brad Loomis, coach with 3D Muscle Journey. Thanks a lot for watching.